Hello everyone, we are The Whispers, and this is how to play Engineer in Risk of Rain Returns. This aims to be a fairly comprehensive guide to the character, covering unlock to proper usage, so if you want to know anything about the character, odds are you'll find it here. Engineer is another zoner, similar to Acrid, but of course rather different in how he goes about creating his kill zones and the manner in which they're powerful. I consider a properly played Engineer to be one of the freest wins someone can get in the original Risk of Rain, and for the most part that holds true in Returns, save for new additions like Drifter being incredibly strong and relatively much simpler to use and therefore succeed with. That being said, he can be a little tricky to learn I suppose, as zoners tend to be in this game, as he relies on proper positioning of not only himself but also his turrets and his mines, as well as a slight degree of resource management, keeping an eye on your mine count and refreshing your turrets at the correct time, but he's so hugely rewarding when you do these things correctly that the game does effectively feel like it's playing itself at times. So let's get started. To acquire Engineer, you just need to purchase 40 drones in total throughout your time playing Risk Returns. Since drones can spawn on the very first stage, often multiple at once, getting this is just a matter of doing enough runs. By the time you understand the basics of the game, and especially by the time you get your first win, odds are you'll probably already have them unlocked. Engineer's first ability is Trinade. You shoot a burst of three bombs that explode on contact with enemies and bounce off other surfaces. They do okay damage, but you really have to hit them all to get anything significant, and against groups, especially early on, you're gonna have trouble holding your ground with these ones, which is exactly where the rest of your kit comes into play. Bounding Mine is the secondary ability, dropping a mine that stays in place until an enemy passes over it, setting it off to do a good bit of damage and stagger enemies. You hold 10 at a time and can cluster them together to store huge amounts of damage sitting in one place. These can be helpful to lock off a flank from enemies, or keep your turrets safe by putting a few mines on each of them. Your utility skill is Thermal Harpoons, firing 4 heat seekers, each doing just shy of a mine's damage. They do damage immediately, and since they shoot straight up, you can use this to hit enemies flying directly above you without having to wait for them to lock on. You get locked in place for the animation, but you can offset this by holding jump and activating it in the air, letting you continue to move away and still dish out damage. Additionally, they only shoot 4 shots, having extra firing speed only increases the speed at which they come out, which will shorten the amount of time you're stuck in place. Last for the special ability, Inji has his auto turrets. You hold two at a time, and when placed they fire three round bursts at enemies. You can only have two on the field at once unless you have an ancient scepter, which raises your cap and storage to three, and you can hop on them to fire over groups, climb up stuff, whatever you want. But here's the huge part, and where Inji really goes crazy. Your turrets inherit all of your items. This means any item you currently have in your position also applies to them. Have gasoline? Every time your turret kills, it'll drop a fire puddle. Ukulele? Now your turrets can shock groups too. Missiles? Ceremonial dagger? They can do it all. This means that effectively you have two other players on the field. Stationary albeit, but with similar power to you. Three if you have Scepter. It is important to note that they don't update their item pools live, which is why I mentioned refreshing your turrets at the right time earlier. So if you have both turrets on the field and get three bright and shiny new items, you'll need to replace those turrets to refresh their list and give them the benefits as well. With this, there's a fairly simple gameplay loop you can use to get started. Find a defensible location, preferably near items, hold off enemies with your turrets, mines, thermal harpoons, and grenades to get the money necessary for those items, then grab them and use the increase in power to safely move to the next location, typically the teleporter. You don't want to get too held up in one spot though, and while you don't have much in the way of mobility, your mines and a single turret drop behind you as a distraction is more than enough to escape a group safely for long enough to get somewhere else, or turn and fight them off so you have the money to buy items once you find them. I want to reiterate this a bit clearer. Just because your turrets stay stationary does not mean that you stay stationary. That timer is going to keep moving on without you. And as any of my fellow Monsoon players can surely vouch, you don't want to be sitting around in a stage for 5 minutes. If you run into a lot of items without the money, or get jumped by a bunch of enemies at once, yep, it's time to throw down the turrets and mines and hold fast against the onslaught for a minute. But if you don't need to stop, you shouldn't. Additionally, turrets and mines have a long cooldown, but you don't have to wait for them all to come back. If you have 3 or 4 more items and only one turret back, but you need the extra power, throw it down and refresh one of your turrets for the damage boost you need. And while their cooldown is long, thermal harpoons are not. They refresh every 6 seconds, so you can safely spam them as soon as they're off cooldown. Another tip, when at the teleporter, consider waiting until you have all or most of your mines before starting, and dump them all where the boss is going to be. Be that beneath the Colossus's feet, 
in the path of a wandering vagrant, where a magma worm is about to burst up, all 10 of them combined deal a ton of damage, and you should absolutely take advantage of it. Also, yes, I know there's a lot here, but there's a ton of little things that are very helpful to know. Please, please, please don't sleep on your primary fire. Yes, it's not the best in the game. By a mile. That's why you have the turrets. But it also isn't useless, and if you aren't attacking alongside your turrets, you're missing out on so much damage that could save you when it counts. Regularly utilizing heat seekers with your bombs allows you to hold your own much safer as well, so you can save your turrets until you need them. Lastly, while yes, they do have a long cooldown, don't be afraid to sacrifice a turret to get to safety like I mentioned before. It can respawn. You, not so much. So better it dies than you. And lastly, lastly, I personally consider it to be worth waiting the extra 30 seconds or so to make sure I have both turrets up before starting the teleporter event, but that's very much personal preference. Whew, that was a lot. Probably gonna need to get more B-roll for that runtime. Let's see if we can't move through the ults a bit faster, eh? Your first ult swaps Trinade for Mortar Barrage. This replaces your burst of bombs with a continuous arc of mortars. While enemies can slip under the arc, you can also utilize it to better take advantage of height differences. It's unlocked by completing the Providence Trial Drowning in Research, where you kill enemies before they reach the ground of your little aquarium tank here. You can jump to reach a bit higher up, and this line in the background marks roughly where you can reach them with a jump shot mortar. I'd save your thermal harpoon charges for a bit later because it makes it easier to deal with these random sand crabs that may spawn too far to get to in time. On that note, try to stay in the center, that way you can more easily reach each side as needed. Your second ult replaces your bounding mines with shockwave mines. Instead of 10, you get only 3, but they launch enemies away, and if you space them properly, can chain said bounces to really push an enemy back. Additionally, each one can trigger 3 times. These are great for keeping enemies away from your turrets, but have less damage more zoning by positional control as opposed to zoning by damage. They're unlocked by completing the Providence Trial from all angles, which can be a bit of a doozy. I suggest holding this bottom right corner, spacing your turrets like this, and setting up your mines to chain bounce enemies that spawn in the room with you out with the rest of them. The brambles are personally my biggest annoyance, and I recommend taking the ukulele first, from there it's easier to mix things up, but I go gasoline, egg, then missiles. The gas is probably the easiest to swap out, either more missiles or egg sooner. Up to you really. Last, your special replaces your standard auto turrets with the V.0.2 prototype laser turret. It also inherits your items, but instead of sitting and firing normally, it spends 8 seconds to charge before firing a huge laser, dealing tons of damage at the cost of its own health. Enemies can target and damage it just like normal turrets, and if it has less health as a result, that of course means it will fire less, because it has less health to sacrifice before it dies. This can be much harder to use as you'll need to defend the turret instead of it defending you, but getting it off fully is basically a guaranteed kill on whatever poor soul is firing at. It also has a ton of interesting item interactions we'll talk about later, but for now you can unlock it by acquiring a beam drone. This is done by finding and combining three laser drones, just the same as Handy does for the Golden Drone. Find three throughout a run, and toss them into a combiner. The ult set is interesting. Nothing is a straight upgrade except maybe mortars, but I think that's more a matter of personal preference. Bounding Mines give up damage for area control, while Laser Turret gives up consistent zone control via consistent additional attackers in return for one of the strongest attacks in the game. Personally, I run standard turret and the mines, but with mortars. And occasionally I swap to bounding mines or back to normal bombs, but all the options are good and the primary and secondary alts really are more a matter of what feels comfortable to you, the player. Hey, we did get through that a little bit faster. Nice. Now then, time for the item wishlist. Laser turret will be getting its own mentions at the end, but for now we'll go through as normal. For white, soldier's syringe. My god, soldier's syringe. Or mocha, I guess, but just, just fire rate. Fire rate. Listen, I don't normally make a big deal about Syringe or mention it a whole ton because, yes, obviously it's good. Even if you're brand new to Risk of Rain, you understand that more bullets means more damage, which means more dead bodies to litter the ground around you. But just a couple of these suddenly make your bombs or mortars into a real threat in and of themselves, which can really free you up to take bigger fights when your turrets and mines are down. And that's without even mentioning the fact that, again, every item really counts three times over because both of your turrets can use them. 
So more bombs, more bullets, and more procs of literally everything else you pick up. Speaking of items to proc, the toxin is great because the enemies will be debuffed as they pass or attack your turrets to get to you. Sticky bombs and other on hits like taser, mortar, and knife are wonderful. And while on hits go hard, let's not forget that on kills like gasoline will make your damage zones more effective. And things like monster tooth, sprouting egg, medkit, and fire shield can all help your turrets stay in the fight alongside you. Man, I try to avoid listing off basically every item, but just turrets, they make everything so much better. In green, I really love charge field generator and anything else that hurts enemies that get too close in any rarity, think barbed wire or tesla, because they do great at keeping your turrets safe while also doing damage. Not to mention in the case of charge field, your zones can overlap, which is pretty fun. Insecticide is also a great item that does double duty for damage and self-sustaining, but this category really goes to Timekeeper's Secret, which each turret can proc independently of each other's and your own. Meaning you can intentionally drop one of those getaway turrets and get a free time stop out of it, or get multiple during a big fight as each one gets low. Having triple the time stop really is something great. In red, ATG Missile Mark II is hard not to recommend just because of how often NG procs with both turrets on the field. You're gonna have more missiles going off than an AC-130 doing a flare dump. Alien Head or more so Wicked Ring if you have crits are great for making sure you can have turrets and mines at the ready whenever you like. Hyper Threader is wild, but Ancient Scepter really takes the cake because it gives you a third standard turret or a second laser one. Crazy stuff. For equipment, Gigantic Amethyst is really handy if you find yourself caught out without turrets, but NG tends to play slow relative to other survivors, and I think Captain's Brooch does a great job of feeding you extra items to help you keep up with the danger curve. For boss items, the on hits are the best for obvious reasons, but Scorching Shell is nice for your turrets as well. Now then, those laser turrets. This isn't everything, but remember, it also inherits all items, so get creative on what stuff you pair with it. At base, the turret fires 5 ticks of damage, doing a fixed percentage of its own health that can't be reduced by tough times. Fire speed increases the number of damage ticks, meaning it must also take less damage per tick with fire rate. I imagine Bitterroot may also give it more time to fire more ticks on account of having more health, and Guardian's Heart or other barriers should do the same, but here's the really crazy stuff. Prophet's Cape will give it immunity for a brief while, while letting it get a ton of free damage off, and Hermit's Scarf gives a chance for each tick of damage to be dodged. This means by getting enough of both, turrets can fire nearly indefinitely. Or, better yet, if you get the red item Umbrella, they also gain the invincibility of the rain, meaning they fire for insane damage per tick covering most of if not the entire screen for a whole 15 seconds straight. I promise you nothing is surviving that. Laugh all you want Providence, but I'm a fire in my laser. And that's all for this one. Definitely took a little bit longer on account of my little break at the end of the year and my recent Baldur's Gate 3 addiction. These guides are going to slow down as I make some other stuff. Think fun little Risk of Rain runs, maybe Risk 2 VR, but also other projects that I've been wanting to work on. BG3 runs, a game some devs sent me a key for, uh, some covers I've been planning, variety content that I used to do. The guides won't stop, of course, and at this point Risk of Rain is very solidly part of my content roster, so to speak, and I'm happy about that. And I hope you'll all be just as happy to see the other stuff I put out. Anyways, I hope to see you all again very soon.